free glowstone, anyone? Well, I might as well. I mean, it is blocking the path. Let's explore the second half of this fortress. I never did come this way, as far as I'm aware. Oh, no wonder it's a dead end. That's okay. Hmm. And that's where those spawners are. This is one mazy fortress, isn't it? Nope. Oh, it's just a magma cube. I'll leave it there. It will live this day. Hmm. And here's the blaze spawner. Oof. This is exceptionally dangerous, actually, now that I think about it. Yeah. Because the Boots of Traveler allow me to automatically walk up the walls. I don't want to be here. Okay. Ooh, they are good shots, aren't they? There we go. Took him out. It's not hurting the Boots, though. Still. Magma Cube, I let you live for a reason, and I forget what that reason is, so you're dead now. Look at me. <laughs> okay, maybe I should just boot it and literally use the boots to just head over to the other spawner, which is a little safer. Yeah, over here. Come on. Come on, Blazes. I don't think I have enough time to block off or wall off anything, but I can give it a shot just because... They aren't spawning just yet. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, they should be spawning very shortly. Let's try filling this all in a little bit, anyway. Just a bit. Yeah, here they come. Okay. And by they, I mean one, but that's okay. There we go. The trick to killing them good is kill them fast. Because that way... They won't have a chance to fight back. Okay. Now comes the tricky bit. Which is just blocking off the spawner so that, at least in this realm, I have the upper hand. Okay. Especially being able to walk on top of blocks. This is getting a bit iffy. Okay. A little bit more. Still, it does give me an upper hand. It, it's, it is pretty game-breaking to be able to jump wherever you want. E there we go. There's another one. See, look at that. That jump. That jump is insane. Come on, guy. Okay. There we go. They cannot escape my magical jumping powers. Oh, this was such a good idea to craft the boots of the traveler. Oh my gosh. No regrets, man. No regrets. Oh, oh. Hello, friend. Oh, 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 my health is low. Oh, my health is low. Oh, my health is low. Let's get out of here. Thankfully, I've got somehow super run, so... Let's wait here. Let the health regenerate. I've already got six more blaze rods and another red wrapping paper, whatever that is for. Yeah. That's wonderful. Is that other guy getting closer to me, maybe? Where is he? He's down there. That's not going to help any, but... Ooh, weather, weather skeletons! Okay, I'll fight you guys, because I can. Fairly easily. Okay. Okay, or not. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. I'm going to die. Or not. Oh, shoot. Okay, I will be right back. I like fighting ones that aren't spawned from the spawner, just because... Well... I get to fight them on my terms instead of over a friggin' lava pool. I think that's enough health. Okay. There we go. One less one there. There we go. I gotta remember not to... Oh my god, a giant magma cube. Oh my god, a giant magma cube. Oh boy. Oh. He's gonna kill me. I took two hits from him and I'm not dead. That's special. Hmm. Oh, hello, buddy. I'm on fire a lot in this place, aren't I? As I should be. It is the nether. 
Oh my god. Okay, I could get some magma creams from the big boy if I'm able to kill him. How this dude? What's he doing? There we go. He only had one life in him anyway. Is the big magma cream just above my head? Yeah, it is. Okay. Okay, if it's just gonna stay there... I don't want to knock it in the lava, per se. If I can get it to go back over here, in the open, that would be better. Okay. Okay, here we go. Magma cream fight. Okay. Oh, okay, I got him on the stairwell. Perfect. Taking him out. There's the magma cream. Good. Taking out the magma creams, taking out the magma creams. Oh, God. There's so many of them. But. I did earn a trophy. One magma cream. Perfect. Okay. One more places. Okay. Get him up against the wall and. Taking him out. Without even any damage. And down there was just more ground, so I wasn't even in danger. That's how it's done. Okay. Mine up some more nether brick, just because I can use it. And why don't I meet you back home, where I will try to build the infernal furnace. That sounds like a lot of fun, doesn't it? See you there. I was experimenting in candy flame a bit, and these things here... This is what Niter is. Niter is an ever-burning flame that looks amazing as lighting. Okay. Now, I'm pretty excited about this. This is kind of like my own experimentation, but I've been doing it here in Candy Flame with just a crucible. Okay? Just a crucible. And... Oh, I don't have my goggles of revealing. Maybe that's why I can't see them. But, uh, basically, wisps... Are these ghostly? Oh, yeah, okay. That's a wisp. What does a wisp do? A wisp kills you. Right now it seems to be on fire because we're in candy flame. And candy flame, of course, is always on fire. Which is kind of funny to see the wisp taking ridiculous damage. Ooh, there's a lightning bolt. But eventually the fire does go out. And if that wisp gets closer, I can show you how it attacks. Let's just go close to it. Okay, come here. Maybe I can kill it, actually. I did. Oh, thank God. Okay. I just killed the wisp, and I got a wispy essence. Whew. That's great. I didn't show how to attack, so basically it does a little electric shock static thingy. And this is a brown one, which apparently is what happens when there's too much dirt in the atmosphere. Which is interesting, because I just basically took my cauldron and threw everything in the atmosphere at once just to see what it would do so it's kind of like my own personal experimentation just outside of it now I have had some experience killing them um, here's three right now there should be some more floating around but again candy flame is the most deadly place that I know besides Null Rouge so I don't really want to hang out there that much however basically those wisps are something that I should be seeing in all reality around my base right now trying to kill me but because of the nature of the way this world is generated it's not so I'm sort of lucky but there is something that I've created that should help me stop uh, the flux but in any case I don't need to worry about it here however the uh, where is it one minute I gotta think it's on this chart somewhere Oh, right there, Flux Research. Yeah, what I did already was I used a silverwood log, which is basically just a rare tree, to create a flux filter. Now, I need to find the recipe for a warded jar and some of this stuff to create the arcane alembic. And now what this does is you put it onto your crucible, and then I believe the way it works is when you make things that drop 
uh, things into the atmosphere, the warded jar will actually collect some of it. So to make a warded jar, I need an arcane wood block and a bunch of glass panes. That's really easy, actually. I can grab that right now. I, cl I, I made a bunch of arcane wood blocks, which actually takes a lot of logs to make. But hey, if you got an axe and a bunch of jungle trees, it's not an issue. I even tried cutting down whole redwood trees. This is what two redwood trees totally looks like. So, you know, achievement unlocked, cut down a ridiculous tree, sure. But, again, I can't really use that for a lot of things, because redwood is like a different kind of log. Anyway, there we go. Here's some glass panes. Now, do I need to make the warded jar in the arcane... in the infusion altar? I'm getting the names of these mixed up. The infusion altar is the big four-block crafting table, and... The Arcane Alembic is the thing that I want to make right now. Okay, so first of all, we got to make a warded jar. So is this going to take um, any sort of... No, no, okay. If it doesn't take anything, then I can just easily make it on the Arcane Workbench. It'll cost me 20 Vs. Uh, yeah, I can do that right here, and it won't be a problem at all. If, uh, if I'm right, then this is going to work. Yeah. 20 Vs. A warded jar. Perfect. Now, all I need other than that, I already made the filter earlier just because it's the only thing that I think you need the filter for. <laughs> Which is interesting because that means besides making the filter, I don't know what else you need silverwood for. Although, to be honest, uh, the, the purity aspect, which you find in diamond and silverwood, can also be found in the leaves. So, I was really smart to grab some shears and grab those originally. I just took them because they're shiny. <laughs> Can you imagine that? Okay. So I need gold. And I think that's it. I think. Let's let's just double check. Arcane Alembic. We're going to need some vitreous, which is glass. Some aqua, which is water. And some aura, which is probably feathers. Or arrows? I think it might be arrows. Oh, and a brewing stand. Okay, so I need to make a brewing stand. And then we'll worry about that other stuff later. So first of all, let's put back on our goggles of revealing. I took them off because they were taking durability damage. The boots are more because I keep running into fire. I might have to make some spare boots, but that's okay. I also look kick-ass in my Thomium Armor Protection 2, and I don't know what Fire Aura 1 does, but somehow it gave me that. I'm, I'm not sure what mod is, is giving extra enchantments, but that sounds kind of cool. All right, guys. There's still so much stuff to do in this game that, that uh, I can't even really express it all. But I do enjoy it a lot. Okay, so I just... Oh, there's some spare cobble. I just need three of you to make a brewing stand. I suppose this is late game stuff, isn't it? Which means, technically, this whole time I should have been covered in wisps trying to kill me. So, I got lucky there. On the negative side, the Wisp Souls actually do have Flux in them. So I possibly wouldn't have had to go to the Nether at all if I would have killed enough of them. Sort of. Something like that, I think. Oh, no. Ah, oh, great. Okay, so now it tells me, yes, I need all of that. So, you know what? I don't even need the glass panes right now. Where's that spider? I don't know. Oh, these wooden posts. I made them from the wood ties that I found back in that dungeon. Because I didn't know what else to do with them, and apparently it made those, so... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Perfect. Okay. Now, the next thing I'm going to need to do is get Aqua and Aura. And I'm sure that aqua and aura, water and air, don't, you know, can't be found in the same element. So, let's very carefully get some aqua. Sure, sugarcane is a good source of that, looks like. And aura, which is feather, is it also arrow? It's also arrow. Well, let's grab them both. I don't exactly need feathers for anything. And I would much rather have this than the other thing. Come on, spider. Okay, that is so cool. 
I think. Is that zombie? Yeah, okay, the zombie... Damn it! I made all these scarecrows because I thought they would keep the, the angry mobs away from my crops because creepers kept spawning inside my wheat field. And to make a scarecrow, it's exactly what it looks like. Three sticks, a melon, and a, and a pumpkin. And then they just kind of sit there and, uh, and look around all fancy-like. Anyway, let's just... Come here. I know I could do this earlier. Yep, there we go. It's so cool just being able to put a trap door down and... Oh, look at me! I'm up top! Okay. So, the aqueous. One. Two. Three. Four. Now, they've got to land in the crucible, which is really awesome. This is about the best use I've ever seen for, you know, something that never had a use in the game to begin with. Ooh! Actually, if I only need that, one feather gives me four, and then four arrows should give me the other eight. And this should, in effect, grant me aura. Oh, no, that's not going to work. Because the aura isn't in arrows. The aura is only in feathers. Okay. My bad. I seem to have mixed myself up a bit. But that's okay. Because I don't need to worry about flux all that much. That looks like eight, right? Done. The Arcane Olympic is now mine. I probably should have used the other wand, but it's okay. It didn't take that much abuse. Now, what you do with the Arcane Olympic is you attach it to the side of your crucible somewhere. So, why don't, in this case, we attach to... Is this side doing anything in my house? Yes, it is. <laughs> okay, let's not destroy the house to test this. Although... No, no, this is definitely a necessary side of the house. <laughs> okay, I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, where am I going with this? Can I break this side of the house? Yeah, I can. Yeah, okay, I don't even know what that hole is there for. But what I can do is I can attach the Alembic right here. See, so the flux filter goes up there into this jar. That's the warded jar, of course. So now what I need to do there, I think, is I need to grab one of those glass files. And the glass files are something that I've had since the start. I crafted those very easily just because they were one of the things that told you you could craft in the book. And it never said what you could do with them. I've been hanging on to them, using them as sources for, you know, the, um, the void aspect. Although wooden bowls were a lot cheaper to use for that. So... Is this gonna work? Or do I have to make a new worded jar every time? One minute. Because I want to create the brain in a jar. Because it is weird. So I'm gonna need another worded jar. Uh, a zombie brain and two spider eyes. Well, I'm almost there. So we're going to need another warded jar. That's okay. I've still got glass panes left over. No, I don't know what the warded, what the brain in a jar does. But I'm kind of enjoying this a whole lot. Not only did I not know what the niter did, and I can't wait to show you Alimentum later. But uh, haven't you always wanted to have a brain in a jar? If I'm a crazy alchemist, it's the perfect thing, whatever it does. I might even want to put it in range of these things. So, okay. Let's use this on the arcane table, I think, because I, that's where you need to make the warded jar. It's very easy to make. I love I love it when things are easy to make. There we go. Warded jar. So now I'm going to need one more spider eye and a zombie brain. And again, if this was a place of nodes, it would start taking it from the environment and then, you know, strange pollution. Oh, yeah, there we go. I need the zombie brain. I'm going to need all the zombie brains, actually, because now that I remember it, the recipe is going to require malice, which only the zombie brain and gas tears have. And I ain't using the gas tears for this. The gas tears are going straight into regen pots uh, later on. Pots, potions, you know how it's said. Okay. And it's going to take a bucket of water. Well, I might as well use this one and I'll make another one later. I don't mind. So we got our bucket of water. 
Zombie Brain. Two Spider Eyes. That's kind of funny. And the Jar. So, it's going to take 888. Eight, eight. Now, this has two and four. Maybe it would make more sense to actually use a gas tier because gas tiers do have the soul element in them. I don't want to overdo it. See, look, they've got four soul and four. Ah, uh, that's hard to say. Zombie brain, gas tears. Zombie brain, gas tears. Uh, but I could also use soul sand. All right. It's easier to get a hold of zombie brains than it is to get a hold of gas tears. I'm going to go with that. And it's certainly, those two are the only things that have the nether aspect in them. 888. Eight, eight. And this has Cognito 4. So, mm, three brains, some soul sand, eight soul sand. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I can do this. Okay, let's just double check how much uh, of this stuff is going to be chucked out of here. So, eight of that, and then eight soul sand. There we go. And, uh, I'm gonna probably need... Oh, and the glass file thing can only collect each essence once, but I figure this will not only not affect the environment at all, but it'll save me some time if it collects stuff in jars. Brain in a jar. Oh, and I get to keep the bucket. Oh, thank you. Oh, that's lovely. I, I literally thought I'd lose the bucket. So now that thing is full of something. It's got eight mortis in it. Now, unfortunately, I don't think Mortis is used in anything. But that's okay. If I'm right, I can just do this. And now I have the Essentia of Mortus. And that's how you use glass files. <laughs> that's kind of cool. But, of course, I can put that up there. It looks kind of nice. What does the brain in a jar do? Okay, where am I going to put this? I can put it... Hmm. Well, what does it say the brain in a jar does, first of all? If you follow it exactly, you'd have a partially animated zombie brain. It's hungry, enjoys eating the thoughts and experiences of those killed nearby. Giving its jar a shake will give it something. Or give me something. Okay, so, the brain in a jar. What do you do? Oh, wow. You are one creepy looking bugger. And you like looking at me. Oh, and I can just pick it up easily. Okay, that's good. I was a little worried that I might have to do something about that. In that case, the brain in a jar can go uh, right here. Oh, look at you. Aren't you cute? Aren't you a cute, deadly construct of murder? You really look brainy, too. You're a very brainy-looking fellow. I think I should call you Philip or something. Some silly thing like that. Aw, I've got a brain in a jar. Hello. Oh, I know what you want. You want to be up on a pedestal. Yes, you do. Okay, that's okay. I'm not heartless. There we go. So, I don't know what to do with you. But I think if I kill things near the brain in a jar, something happens. But otherwise, it's just a really... This is an awesome decoration. Man, I don't know how to use this. I'll figure it out later. Alright, now the next thing I want to make... Uh, there's a lot. Uh, oh, I did get some obsidian for this, and I think I might have a lava bucket somewhere, too. On me? No, not on me. In that chest? No. Not that chest. Okay. So, the next thing we're gonna make is the Infernal Furnace. And this 
is the thing that I got all the nether brick for earlier. So I'm happy about that. Yeah. I'm going to leave all this junk in my inventory for right now just because it's better to do that than empty it, right? I'm going to need one iron bar, so I'll take that right off my house and fix that back up again with a glass pane. It's okay. It's okay. I don't mind. I'll put those in there in case I need them again for warded jars. Okay. This is going to be a big thing. Because the Infernal Furnace... Where is that? According to what I'm guessing, is I think I need to actually build this. Because it's not in a crafting recipe, it's in this. So, let's build an Infernal Furnace. Are you ready? Where are we going to put this sucker? I can tell you right now, I think right here is the perfect place for the Infernal Furnace. I think it just makes a lot of sense that... There would be a giant furnace outside the blast chamber room. So, what would we need to do? Now, we're going to make the recipe here. And it appeared to be a 3x3 three three recipe, so this should be the perfect place. So the bottom was like... It was like a plus sign, right? One more time. Plus sign, and then... Yeah, okay. Because I want to get this right. I, I hate having to pick obsidian back up again. Okay, so then you've got that. And then I think it was obsidian on all sides. Mm-hmm. And then... And then, yeah. Okay, so you just keep going. There we go. Now, what the Infernal Furnace does is it lets you burn things without needing fuel. Like, you can shove them in and, uh, through the top. And it will just work. There. So that's what it does. Or, that's what it looks like, at least. I should probably do something about that. Just because it's an open lava source. And you know how I do with open lava sources, don't you? I'm going to need my wand. It has 110 Vs. This should mean that I can do it because I think it only costs 100 to make. Right? One more time to check. 100 Vs, yeah. Okay, you ready to do this, guys? Infernal Furnace, get. Oh, yeah. So you shove the stuff in the top. And it comes out... Here. Oh, yeah, that is cool. I kind of want to look at that while I'm in here. So we'll do just that. Yeah, awesome. Infernal Furnace. It's kind of a big structure, and you definitely need to, uh... Hmm. Know what you're doing. So, let's test it out. I can also add an arcane bellows to it to reduce the amount of flux it creates, but again, I don't really need to worry about that here. I think it might also do other things. Okay, so here's the arcane... There we go. So that that's literally how I've been getting my motion aspect the whole time. So there we go, a hungry chest. And for the sake of argument, let's use a file on this thing. Which apparently collected 16 plant life. Oh. Okay, that's really interesting. I didn't realize that it only took... Where's the zombie? It's not this door would be at that door. Yeah, okay. Fair enough, zombie. I thought the skeleton... The, the, the scarecrows would help with the creepers a little bit. It looks like no. I really need to light up this field more. But that's interesting. That means the glass files collect exactly eight of any kind of essence. Or at least eight of it is enough to be in your thingamajig. The arcane alembum. So let's put those away. Oh, and they stack. Oh, thank God they stack. Cool. That's actually really awesome. So if I ever need plant or death, and I'm probably not going to need death, I can just use that. And as for the hungry chest, 
It should open up, just if I throw things on the ground. Is how it's supposedly gonna work. Maybe it works when I don't look at it. Oh! <laughs> Aww. You're cute! Of course, that means you'd have to be right next to the things I want to use with you. Which means for right now, you'll work with the furnace. You just have to be right outside the furnace. And later on, when I want to... Oh! God damn zombies. So do we really have to do this now? Fair enough. Fair enough. I'm running out of sword. Bloody hell. Now that's on wrong. If I'm gonna do a door, I might as well do a door right. Huh. Anyway, what I was saying was, it'll work with overflow quite well, I think, when it comes to my machine, too. If I ever... That's even worse. You know, my machine, it, it tends to overflow quite a bit, because for some reason, the pulverizer pulverizes a lot faster than the furnace can create it, so stuff just flies out all the time. So now I can pick up the chest, put it over there, and it'll work. Alright guys, apparently destroying the plate in front of the infernal furnace causes a blaze to be the thing in the middle. That's insane. So I can just put a blaze in the overworld if I want to just break the infernal furnace over and over again. Of course, it'll cost me a lava bucket to do that. But is that so bad? Also, I figured out why it wasn't working. It takes Vs to run the furnace. I should have known that all along. However, technically that means I have my own blaze spawner, providing I shove lava into it and break the grate in the front. I'm sure that isn't the intended purpose. But whoever needs to use the intended purpose? <laughs> That's kind of cool.